Just need to finish setting this up. Just gotta clean this off. Can we take our masks off yet? Just over seven feet. So that means it's time for another edition of Your, Your Nightly, Nightly News. News. Here we are with our first ever social distancing nightly news. I'm Caden. And I'm Cammie. Today we look at remote learning. But so first, we're going to look at how back to school went. We're back in action for the 2020-2021 school year, but it's not what you think. We're wearing masks, staying sanitized, and staying as far away from each other as possible. These changes have caused a great impact on our students and staff of today. I'm here with consumer ed teacher and head football coach, Mr. Freeman. So as a teacher, how do you feel about the schedule with the new gu guidelines? Um, obviously, the guidelines aren't what we want them to be, but in order to be safe and follow the rules and get back to normalcy at some point, we have to wear masks. And um, I think the school has done a great job of following all the guidelines and having the teachers and the students do the same. And I feel that the school year has gone surprisingly well with everything going on. And yes, we had that um, hiccup with some e-learning, but hopefully we can all stay safe and healthy and continue to write out the school year and, you know, finish the school year. So are you looking forward to being this year's new football head coach? Of course I am. I mean, it's been a, a different journey and a different ride, but we have a great team that is filled with a lot of seniors and a lot of underclassmen that are ready to adapt and do things that are different than they have been in the past. Obviously the season isn't in the fall like we would and that does affect students and it affects players and we want to have something to look forward to in the spring and as long as we stay safe and healthy we'll have a great spring season hopefully. Do you think that having football will be difficult during these times? Um, having football in the spring will definitely be difficult just because of the weather, because it tends to be really cold early in the spring with lots of snow and rain and stuff like that, which will affect field condition. But the biggest thing that concerns me with football is the, and, and just like any other club or sport or activity, is the mental health of the students. And right now we have a couple sports going on, but not having all of the sports and clubs and activities really affect how students, you know, have their social life and do things outside of school and the school really likes to put an emphasis on the social and the mental health of our students and our staff and as long as we can continue to do the things that keep us safe and healthy we can continue to have things like football and clubs and activities but just like the staff does and the administration does the students have to do their part and follow the rules follow the guidelines and we need sports, we need clubs, we need activities in the school for the mental health of the students. And we need to be together as a school, as administration, as students, as teachers in promoting mental health within the student athletes and the clubs and organizations. What do you think will be the most challenging part of the football season this year? I'm just adapting to whatever they throw at us because right now they say we're going to have a seven game season in March and April, but who knows what it's going to look like. We don't know what basketball is going to look like. We don't know what the winter is going to look like with all the other clubs and activities. So it's just the adapting mindset of whatever is going to come along, whatever is going to get thrown at us. And like I said, our team is full of lots of great kids who are ready to take on any responsibilities that we have. Thank you. Thank you. As volleyball head coach, what do you need to do to keep your players safe and go along with the coronavirus guidelines? Um, well, probably the biggest thing we have to think about is our interactions with each other. And, you know, volleyball is, while it's considered somewhat of a contact sport, it's really a low contact sport, but we have to look at the equipment we're using. We have to look at um, kind of like our water breaks, and now we have to wear masks, so there's mask breaks involved, and it's, it's really been an adjustment. But these are things that started in the summer, so I feel like we're kind of adjusting and we're growing into these changes. Whether they stay in the spring or not, I don't know, but 
Um, but the kids have been doing a great job and they are just rolling with with what's thrown our way and it's still they're working hard and we're I'm really happy with with how things are going. I'm here with FHS principal Mr. Lapp. So Mr. Lapp, how do you think the students and staff are adjusting to the new school year? Well, I actually, I, I think we're doing very well. I mean, I, I know that uh, after a couple of weeks when we went on on full remote there for uh, for two, that I know some students struggled, but I think we came out of that really well. And from, you know, what I'm getting from teachers um, and all the teaching assistants is that I think all the, all the kids are kind of feeling better about being in school. I know it's, it's a difficult thing. I think one of the things that we're finding out through remote learning is that, um, you know, these things are barriers to seeing, you know, what our faces look like. And, and there definitely there's a, there's a difference in communication when you don't see the, the nonverbal signs of a, of a face. So, um, but to be able to see everybody's eyes after that long, that long spring last year, I'm thrilled. And I think overall, everybody's adjusted very well. You know, my encouragement continues to be though, get your homework done. As we know, all we can do is adjust to the new set of rules each and every day. I'm Kami Pusick, and this year is going to be one crazy ride. Things are certainly different this year. Remote learning has definitely been a new experience this year. Let's take a closer look. Well, it's the start of the school year again, but this year is anything but traditional. With the COVID-19 pandemic in full swing, many students have opted to remote learn. With this comes many obstacles to overcome. Let's talk to some teachers and students about how they're overcoming them. Hi, this is Jenna. She is a non-remote learner, obviously. Um, what will right. you expect if we go back to remote learning again? Um, I expect higher levels of stress because it's really hard to learn while you're trying to teach yourself. No matter how much guidance teachers give you, you're still doing most of it independently. What do you hope? changes if we go back. I hope for non-mandatory Zoom calls because I feel like Zooms take up a lot of time. It would be easier if teachers just made instructional videos beforehand that we could watch. What classes do you think will be hard? I think math classes are the hardest because you have no idea what you're doing going into it and trying to teach yourself is nearly impossible. I'm here with Delilah, a former online student. So Delilah, what were some pros and cons of being an online learner? Pros were that I could eat and sleep whenever I want to, and the cons, for me, I'm an in-person, um, hands-on learner, so I couldn't really work better through a screen. Now that you're back at school, which one do you prefer? Uh, school, because um, at home I would have computer problems and it would take a while for me to catch up on assignments. Also, now that you're back, has, have you found anything difficult? Um, no. Uh, the teachers have been helping me, and so have my classmates, so it's been nice. Okay, thank you for doing this interview with me. I'm Leah, here with Ms. Swanson. What are the biggest challenges of remote learning from a teacher perspective? From a teacher perspective, if we're going all the way back to when we first started remote learning in March, I think it was wrapping my head around how on earth do I teach? my students remotely because when I went to college I was never told how to teach students from a computer and I think another thing that was challenging was organization because a lot of students they couldn't find their homework assignments they didn't know where to find them how to submit them because teachers do things all a little bit differently and another challenge I would say was just literally being home and how like the whole shutdown of everything really changed um, have you received any student commentary on remote learning yeah, we have received quite a bit. I think that, again, making sure that students, one, communicate when they can't find something, opening up that communication is really important. Like, if students don't email us or message us on Schoology, we aren't going to know how to help them. And so I think having that open line of communication with students is important and just trying to be consistent throughout all of my classes. What advice do you have for people who are remote learning or in the future if we go back to remote learning? So one thing that I told my student was that you need to keep a routine and a schedule. Thank you for your time. And there you have it, folks. Once again, Phil Chris might have to switch into e-learning if things get a little too unstable. And that's no good. For the Nightly News, I'm Brandon. We're all slowly getting used to this. Well, that's our show. We'll see you soon with another edition of... Your Nightly News.